Hey guys, the Omni Sawyer is at your service. First of all, my exams are finally over, so I am free to do the one thing I love more than anything in the world. Playing video games. Which brings me to the topic of this countdown. Top 15 favorite video game franchises or series. You ever had that game that was so good the developers made one or two sequels that surpassed the original? Well, that's how franchises are born. And I am here to show you my 15 personal favorite video game franchises. Keep in mind, this is my personal opinion, so if one of your favorite franchises didn't make it to my list, then it's because I probably haven't played any game from those respective franchises. So don't leave any hateful comments. Also, for a franchise to be a franchise, it has to have at least 3 games. So that means certain series like Clock and Normal Heroes aren't going to be on this list. So without further ado, let's get this countdown started! I'm not usually fond of PC gaming, but when I want to play on the PC, I play The Sims. The Sims is a life simulation franchise, meaning that it's a video game series where you can create your own characters, families, and houses. You can also give your characters any personality you want. For example, you can have your character be the nicest guy in the world, a real douche, or a total badass. And it's all done by just clicking a button. Sounds awesome, right? It only gets better with expansion packs that totally doesn't make EA work desperate, which can bring new features to make the games a lot more enjoyable. My favorite game in the series is The Sims 3, because it has a more open world, gives more freedom when it comes to creativity, and also better AI. All of the popularity it received has spawned its own spin-off. Why is this spin-off you may ask? You'll find out soon enough. Hold on, let me just do a little something here. You may be wondering why did I turn into Eat Blast? Because Eat Blast is my personal flame shield. So I'm just gonna show you why I turn into Eat Blast. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Mario Brothers. Hulk? Smash him! Fight! Wait just a minute, let me explain why Super Mario is only number 14! Well I'm aware of how goddamn great the Mario series is, and how it saved the video game industry after the Atari disaster. I think it's a bit overrated nowadays. As most of the Mario games on the main series are just one copy-paste sequel after another. However, that does not mean I hate it. In fact, I love everything about it. The gameplay, the characters, the level designs, and the music are some of the most iconic I've ever seen. From what I've heard, it's the spin-offs that show how truly amazing the Mario series is. Showing that our favorite fat brummer can do very well on many different video gaming genres. RPGs, sports, racing, party, you name it. But the only spin off I've ever played was Mario Kart Wii. As much as I love racing games, I really don't like that game. What do we do to our band AI and those freaking blue shells? <sighs> Overall, I love the Mario series a lot. Just not enough to be played any higher. Maybe if I had played more of Mario's spin-offs, it would have been a lot higher. But for now, it stays at number 14 on my list, at least until I play one of its amazing spin-offs.
Remember when I said that the Sims popularity spawned the spin-off? Well, that spin-off is none other than the number 13 spot on my list, My Sims. Don't say it, BBG. My Sims is an awesome series and you know it. Anyway, My Sims is a lot like The Sims. Only more child friendly and cartoony. It still lets you bu build your own characters and houses just like The Sims. So why do I prefer this over The Sims? Well, for a number of reasons actually. Number one, I love cartoony art styles a lot more than realistic models. It allows more opportunity to put in some very well done comedy and to add a lot of creativity in the overall design of the game. Number two, my Sims has his own share of characters, each with their own personality. Buddy the Grumsy Bellhop, Gino the Master Chef with the Italian accent, DJ Candy with the rock and art sensation, and my personal favorite, Yuki, the cute and adorable girl that likes to bite everyone's faces. All of them are just awesome in their own way. And number three. The My Sims is almost as versatile as Mario when it comes to video game genres, including party, racing, adventure, and even combat flight. So overall, My Sims is worlds of fun, and if you can get past the childish nature of the series, you can have a lot of fun with this amazing series. It's another one of those popular series. Which one is it? Well... Come down guys, I don't hate The Legend of Zelda, if I hated it, it wouldn't be on this list, right? Anyway, The Legend of Zelda is an amazing video game franchise, it's as popular as freaking Mario. It's considered to be the Lord of the Rings of video games. I love it so much. The open world, level designs, dungeons, characters and gameplay are some of the best in the entire gaming generation, for the most part. The first Zelda game I've ever played was Wind Waker, and boy was it a fun game. I have so many great memories of running around killing enemies with a Master Sword and other weapons like bombs, the cross shot, bow and arrows, the list goes on and on. This series also made me realize that graphics don't matter as long as the rest of the game is awesome. As I was at that phase where I believed that great graphics always mean great games, I was proven wrong when I played Ocarina of Time Master Quest Edition. As I was like, this game has terrible graphics but I'm too busy having fun to whine about it. It was that fun. So why is this only number 12? No special reason really. There's nothing wrong about this series in my opinion, I just found 11 franchises that I just love much more than the Zelda series. Trust me, it gets better from here. Ubisoft is known as one of the greatest gaming companies in existence, having made such great games such as Assassin's Creed, Beyond Good and Evil, Far Cry, and the number 11 spot on this list, Rayman. Rayman is one of the few franchises to flawlessly jump from 2D to 3D platforming, and then go back to 2D platforming. The first Rayman game was one of the first PS1 games I ever owned and it was ball cracking we are not even halfway through the game. Things changed with Wayman 2, where everything was much easier. 
but still a little challenging, with a really dark story and lots of very likable characters. The Rain Man 3 came along and people hated it for reasons that would only be plausible for those born without a common sense. Or brain. Or both. My thoughts? Well, I'll let Corus answer that for me. I disagree! I think I already explained how awesome this game is on my first countdown, so I'm not gonna talk more about it. Let's just say that Rayman 3 is a must have for any Rayman fan out there. Then the rabbits came along and quickly overshadowed Rayman in popularity. While I loved those crazy rabbits, I hated the fact that they replaced Rayman as the mascot of Ubisoft. Until they decided that both Rayman and the rabbits should be separate franchises with equal popularity, and thus Rayman Origins came to be. While I haven't played it yet, I've heard a lot of great things about it. Whatever happens, Rayman will always have a place in my heart. And nothing is going to convince me to say otherwise. It's game time. As a fan of science fiction, there's no way I would ignore a great series like Metroid. And why should I ignore it? It has everything I love in a sci-fi adventure series. We're taking alien environments? Check. Lots of dangerous, scary, and disturbing aliens? Check. Huge world of awesome weapons and power-ups? Check. A badass manly guy blasting through any obstacle and dangerous creatures in the way? Uh, we'll play some with a strong and independent woman and you got yourself a check. Yes, it's no secret that Metroid was the first ever video game franchise to have a woman as a protagonist, way before Lara Croft was introduced to the world. And I love this new twist, as it shows everyone that women can be just as badass and brave as Chuck Norris. <laughs> One thing the Metroid series has always done right was the atmosphere as it always brings up a certain emotion into the player's heart, whether it is fear or loneliness, both of which were done perfectly in Metroid Fusion and in Metroid Prime. Nowadays, the Metroid series has decreased in popularity, mostly because of Metroid Other M. I haven't played it yet, so no comments on it, but I am very interested in it and might get it this year, just as long as no angry fanboy tries to stop me from getting that game. This may co come off as a surprise to all of you, but Metroid Prime is so far the only Metroid game I ever played. Yeah, I only played one game for this franchise and yet I put either than Mario and Zelda. That's how amazing it is, but it's also why I can't put it in either. Overall, the Metroid series is something that every sci-fi fan should have before they die. Now let's move on to the next novel before a space away a joke comes out of no- It's game time. Now it's a franchise Ben would always play as either accelerate or fast track. Sonic the Hedgehog. This is the most fast-paced series I've ever played. Seriously, it's like you need superhuman speed and reflexes to get through every obstacle without a scratch. Anyway, the Sonic games are, for the most part, awesome and lots of fun. Even though I've never actually played any of the 2D Sonic games, I've played a bunch of 3D Sonic games and loved every single one of them. Even Sonic 06. <laughs> oh wait, you're serious. Moving on. The Sonic series is the most popular franchise to not be created by Nintendo. Hell, even Nintendo knows how goddamn popular it is. The characters in the Sonic series get mostly aid for having no character development, including Sonic himself. Hey, not cool. You said it, Sonic. In fact, I love every single character in the Sonic series. Amy? Love her so much. Big? Like that guy. Princess Elise? Uh, she's okay. Rouge? Absolutely love her, but not in a Rule 34 kind of way, so characters are not a problem in the Sonic series. To me at least. What about the music? Beyond perfect. If there's one thing that anyone can agree with, 
is that even the worst Sonic game in existence can have some of the best soundtracks in existence. Crush 40, the band that composes the vocal songs for the Sonic series, made some of the best soundtracks ever, like I Am All of Me, One I'm Made Of, Open Your Heart, Raven Run, Night of the Wind, and my all time favorite, All Rail Shadow, which happens to be my intro team. Overall, despite having one of the worst fan bases in existence, the Sonic series is one of the greatest series ever and the best example of a video game series recovering from an horrible past. Keep on worrying Sonic, we're all waiting for you to amaze us once more. At least the ones that are still loyal to you. I wonder how it went with Nintendo when they made the number 8 franchise on this list. Okay, here's an idea for a new franchise. How about a little boy with psychokinetic powers who goes on an adventure for wonder and joy until he faces a spoiled brat named Zarian Master who's extra disturbing and messed up. What do you think? Eh, not grabbing me. What else you got? Okay, how about a big ape wearing a tire that has a stupidly big smile on his face? Doesn't scream Joker. A cute pink marshmallow that can copy the abilities of anyone he swallows? Uh, been there, done that. A guy with a top hat that will solve mysteries via challenging puzzles? Nah, too Riddler. God, it's so difficult to come up with a new franchise. Oh. Can we just focus on all the other old ones we got? Wait, all the old ones, that's it. We take all the franchises that are already there, put them all in one game, and make the most popular characters fight each other in an epic battle that will satisfy every game's desire to pit one franchise against another. What do you think? That could gum up the gumshoes for days. And with the right touch, it could have that crazy crime clown flair. <laughs> I love it! What else can be said about Super Smash Bros. that no one else has said already? Practically nothing since everyone already explained how goddamn amazing the series is. Whoever came up with the idea of pitting Nintendo's most famous mascots in an epic fight against each other deserves every medal or trophy in the world. Oh wait, that's been said already. Well, instead of an elf bar, Super Smash Bros. has a damage percentage that gets bigger and bigger every time you get it. And the higher your damage percentage, the more likely you get KO'd off the stage by your opponents. That's when the epicness scale goes off the charts, especially when you're on multiplayer mode with your friends. The character roster is perfect. Having characters from Nintendo's most popular franchises like Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon, and some lesser known ones like F Zero, Fire Emblem, and Earthbound, making them much, much more popular than they were before. That's what I like the most about the Super Smash Bros. series. It took some franchises that faded to obscurity and made them popular again. The best example I can think of is Kid Icarus, as it was a classic NES game that was forgotten, but then Brawl brought it back to its deserved popularity, which spawned a new Kid Icarus game for the 3DS called Kid Icarus Uprising. This might shock you, but I've only played one Smash Bros. game, and that's Melee. I don't have the original or even Brawl. What? Yeah, I know. Anyway, my amazing Melee are Falco Lombardi, Samazaren, and Kirby. Falco because he's cool and fun to play as, Samus because she's a heavy hitter with worlds of versatility, and Kirby because I have lots of fun with his copy ability. Like I said before, there's nothing I can say about Smash Bros. that hasn't already been said. It's an amazing series and hopefully the next Smash Bros. will blow its predecessors out of our galaxy and beyond. Speaking of the next Smash Bros., the characters I want to see in the next installment are Ridley, The Rabbit, Gawade, Wayman, Shadow, and Konoha. Make it happen, Sakurai!
I love racing games. I just love to be behind the wheel and drive some of the fastest cars in the world to the finish line before anyone else reaches it. It just so happens that I have some racing franchises such as F-Zero, Need for Speed, and the number 7 on this list, Gran Turismo. Some people seem to have a problem with this particular franchise, mostly because it's either too realistic or really boring, seeing it as a Call of Duty of racing games. Yeah, I got bull crap on that statement. The Gran Turismo series is what made me love racing games in the first place. As if the slogan didn't make it obvious, Gran Turismo is a real driving simulator. As the gameplay mechanics, environments, and the cars themselves are as realistic as possible. Speaking of cars, what racing games would be without cars? It's like getting a 3DS without buying a 3DS game. The cars range from normal everyday cars that you and all your parents usually drive, to fancy sports cars, to classic Moscow cars, to legendary race cars, to freaking F1 cars, yes, I'm not kidding. You can actually get a Formula 1 in Gran Turismo. That's just freaking awesome! There's also a career mode, or GT mode, where it has you start out with a plain old normal stock car that you use to compete in numerous races and racing tournaments to win first place in every single one of them. Then it's ka -ching, ka -ching, big bucks. Yeah, like he said, you can win a huge pile of cash for every race you win, which you can spend on better cars and upgrades for the car you're using at the moment. You can even win a new car whenever you complete the racing tournament in first place. While you're completing races, you may have noticed that some races aren't available yet. Well, that's because you need to take a license test, which is this game's version of the DMV. I hate the DMV. Don't worry, Coop. The license test is actually pretty fun, as the test, or rather a bunch of tests, is a huge world of awesome time trial challenges, where you have to at least get a bronze trophy to pass each time trial. While getting a bronze trophy in every time trial is very easy, the real challenge comes from getting a gold trophy in every time trial. These time trials are also important to practice your driving skills. So yeah, it's just like the DMV, only without the long waiting time and the rim test. I really hate the DMV. Overall, Gran Turismo is a wonderful racing franchise with the best graphics the PlayStation can handle, with its vast collection of cars designed with every single tiny detail thought out, amazing tracks, some completely original to the game and others based on real life racing tracks, and lots of fun challenges that will keep you playing for hours, days, months, and maybe years. And when's Gran Turismo 6 coming along for the PS3? I'm more than excited for it. And thank god it's not a PS4 exclusive. It's game time. Alright, I just finished the Legend of Spiral Dawn of the Dragon. God, that game was just pure awesomeness. And a great way to end... <laughs> Wait, what's that? A new Spiral game was announced? That's awesome! Let me have a look at it! What should we do today? We could go swimming, we could go to the lava pits, or we could go fishing! Oh my god! What have they done to you, purple buddy? So yeah, I was pretty pissed when Skyrim this came out, and for good reason, that's not the real spiral, this is the real spiral. Spiral the Dragon is amazing in every way possible, being the PlayStation equivalent of Banjo-Kazooie, Spiral the Dragon is pure platforming heaven. 
The series stars a young purple dragon named Spyro, who, despite the small size, is very powerful and can kick a lot of ass. He's also cocky and stubborn, which essentially makes him a very likable and hilarious smartass. The first Spyro game has Spyro save all of the dragons, who have been turned into stone statues by the main villain of the game, Nasty Gork. While the game is pretty good, it felt like some of its potential has gone to waste. Thankfully, Spyro 2 Gateway to Grimmer, or Ripto's Rage in the US, Fix that with better gameplay and a better story. In this game, Spyro and his best friend Spark the Dragonfly want to relax in a place called Dragon Shores, but instead get themselves into the world of Avalon, where he has to save it from the main antagonist of the classic series, Ripto. This game is where the Spyro series showed its true potential with its beautiful scenery, hilarious characters, and flawless gameplay. Can this get any better? The answer? Spyro Tree, Ear of the Dragon. Spyro 2 was already a great game, but somehow Spyro 3 made it look like a rusty old robot. In this game, all of the dragon eggs were stolen by a mysterious person named Bianca, who works for the main villain of the game, the Sorceress. So now it's up to Spyro, Sparks, and their friend from the last game, onto the cheetah, to save the dragon egg, with the help of some new friends along the way. This is by far my favorite Spyro game in the entire series, and it's easy to see why. Great characters, great story, great graphics by PS1 standards, great everything! Then there are the other Spyro games. Spyro the Enter the Dragonfly was pretty mad to me. Spyro Heroes Tale was so much fun to play and explore the open world and had the funniest moments in the entire series. And the Legend of Spyro Trilogy? I already talked about it on my first countdown, so I'll say this. Spyro the Dragon plus World of the Wings equals amazing masterpiece. In conclusion, Spyro is one of my childhood heroes and I loved him ever since his debut. So it was very heartbreaking when Activision decided to give him the witty wall hand treatment like the cold hearted greedy bastards that they are. So if any good gaming company that cares about his fans is watching this, please save my childhood hero and take him away from Activision's new greedy ass. What can I say about the Metal Gear Solid series? Except that I haven't played any of its games, so it's not on the list. Sorry guys. Ah! Well, what do I do? Every pony's gonna see me fail! The Wonderbolts will never let a loser like me join! The Princess Celestia will probably banish me to the Everfree Forest! My life is ruined! Come down guys! I haven't played Metal Gear Solid series, but I do plan on trying it out. In the meantime, it's a kid friendly version of Metal Gear Solid. Sly Cooper is the best cell-based platforming series ever. The series is set on the real world, populated by anthropomorphic animals. The main protagonist is a young adult raccoon named Sly Cooper. He said it! He said it! Sly descends from a long line of master thieves from feudal Japan, medieval Europe, Wild West, ancient Egypt, and even the pirate era. Wow! Wish I had cool ancestors like him. Anyway, Sly gets all of his thieving skills from the TV's raccoons, the Cooper family's book of their unique thieving techniques and moves. One day, a villainous gang known as the Fiendish Five came to Sly's house, brutally murdered his parents, and stole the TV's raccoonus. Sly was then sent to orphanage where he met his best friends for life, Bentley, the super genius turtle who sounds a lot like a Sly who has hysterical we do day tree, and Murray, who was a coward in the first game, but then became a hilarious powerhouse in the second game. Eventually, they were able to defeat the leader of the Fiendish Five, Quarkwood, and recover the stolen pages of the TV's raccoons with some help from Interpol's finest police inspector and Sly's love interest, Carmelita Fox, who happens to be my favorite character in the Sly Cooper series. Hello, Foxy Mama! <coughs> anyway. One of the reasons I love this series is its cartoon and art style, with the cutscenes being presented in comic book style. That and the gameplay is pretty fun and unique, as you can pickpocket a Sly Cooper, act to advanced tech as Bentley, and just break stuff and kicking ass as DRUMORY! 
and also shocking your enemies into submissions called Morita is really satisfying as well, which is one of the reasons I love Call Morita so much. The villains are all super awesome, with every single one of them having their own unique personality and backstory. Yeah, you know a franchise is awesome when none of the villains in it suck. Overall, Sly Cooper is self-platforming at its finest, with brilliant storytelling, amazing characters, flawless gameplay, and great villains. So, still panicking about Metal Gear Solid not being here? No. Good, let's move on to the next numbers, shall we? I've already said before in the Metroid segment that I love sci-fi adventure games, so it's only natural that I love the Ratchet and Clank series. After Insomniac sold the rights to the Spiral series, they had to create some sort of series for the PS2, and thus, Ratchet and Clank was born. And it is awesome! Seriously, there's no way that making a sci-fi adventure series with an epic, creative, and powerful arsenal of weapons which you can use to destroy any dangerous enemy with ease and a ton of beautiful and expansive planets to explore is a bad idea. In fact, this is the most fun I ever had with third-person shooters. The characters in this series are all very likable and none of them are really annoying or downright dateable. There's Ratchet, the headstrong, feline like hero, Crank, the smart, wise-cracking robot, Captain Quark who was a huge jerk in the first two games but then became likable after the third game, Dr. Nefarious, the mad scientist robot and also the best villain of the series, and many other great characters. Another thing that the Ratchet and Clank series is known for is its incredible sense of humor. To be honest, this is the funniest series I've ever seen, as every single joke has at least brought a smile to my face. Just watch these scenes and I dare you to not laugh at these moments. My daughter tells me you're a man who's good with his hands, Ratchet. Sir, I, I swear I never- The city's laser shield- <laughs> Perhaps you should have read the instruction manual. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, Ratchet. <laughs> hmm, Miss Gears may be in league with Dr. Nefarious. Yeah, who knew? She always seems so sweet and innocent in her videos. Well, except for that one with the... You know the... <clears throat> Behold the final chapter of this galaxy's destiny. The Age of Robots! You are a man robot my spot rubs go zap, zap, zap with you See what I mean? My favorite game in the series is A Crack in Time, cause it has the best story, the best awesome weapons, it allows free homing space travel, and it finally gave Crank an important role in the game. Overall, the Legend Crank series is extremely amazing, with lots of beautiful environments slash planets, great characters, outstanding sense of humor, and also the most badass arsenal of weapons in the entire universe, which makes this the second best PlayStation exclusive franchise on this list. My second best? Well, let's find out. Yep, 
Jack and Daxter is my favorite PlayStation exclusive franchise. And why not? This has everything I love in a video game franchise. Great gameplay, awesome characters for the most part, epic stories, and lots of fun to play. After Naughty Dog sold the rights to the Crash Bandicoot series to some other company, it was obvious that they had to create another IP to keep the cash flowing in their pockets. And they managed to do just that, and fast with colors flying out of our atmosphere into... Now this time you're going glitch! Where was I? Oh yeah! Now he thought created the Jack and Daxter series, starting with Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy, which happens to be my very first PS2 game. The story goes like this. Two young boys named Jack and Daxter yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. went off to Misty Island, where Jack accidentally pushed Daxter into a pool of dark Kiko, which turned him into an Arzo instead of killing him. So now they had to find a way to turn Daxter back to normal with the help of Samos and his daughter and Jack's love interest, Kira. In the end, Daxter doesn't get to be human again. Then in the sequel, Jack 2, Jack and his friends find themselves in a dystopian future where Jack gets captured by Bell and Praxis, who uses them as an experiment to make some kind of dark ego filled super soldier. This of course shapes Jack from a curious and pure hearted hero to a vengeful and angry guy who seeks revenge on the good Baron, which was the main objective of the game. In Jack 3, Jack, Daxter and one of their friends, a monkey parrot hybrid named Becker, are kicked out of Raven City thanks to Count Volga's one dick face here. It's Vega! Shut up! They eventually end up in Sparkus City, where they meet Jack's father, Damus, but Jack doesn't know this until he dies in an emerald ambush and gets taunted by Vigor. I've told you a short version of the Jack trilogy story, so if you want the long version, play the games. Spin-offs were made as well, such as Jack X, Daxter, and The Wasp Frontier. Jack X was an awesome combat racing game with lots of chaos and destruction. Daxter gave... well... Daxter, a chance to be the hero that he supposed to be all the time. And the Wasp Frontier was... not bad, but very disappointing. This, this series was the first sign that Naughty Dog was gonna make a, other different franchises, with the target audience being those who grew up with the previous work. Think about it. Crash Bandicoot was made for kids. Jack and Daxter was made for older kids and teenagers, Uncharted was made for teenagers and adults, and their most recent title, The Last of Us, was made for adults only. Kinda like... In conclusion, the Jack and Daxter series is undeniably awesome and it sends me that no Jack and Daxter game was made for the PS3. MAKE JACK 4! YOU FREAKING HAVE TO! You know, I don't think I explained very well about why Super Mario is at number 14 on my list. It wasn't just because I haven't played most of its awesome spin-offs, but it was mostly because I didn't grow up with Mario as a kid. Instead, I grew up with Sony's own version of Super Mario. Crash Bandicoot Oh my god, this is my childhood in its entirety. As Crash Bandicoot introduced me to video games and it was the best childhood memory I've ever experienced. Okay, enough nostalgia, let's talk about why I love this series. Before Jack and Daxter was made, Sony wanted to create an IP to compete with Nintendo and Sega in the video gaming business. And so Crash Bandicoot was born as a potential rival to Super Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog. The first Crash Bandicoot game was a good way to show what Crash was truly made of. But it felt slightly whack was too due to its linearity and extreme difficulty not even halfway through the game. Thankfully the sequel, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Twice Back, which was the first game I've ever played, fixed everything that was wrong with the first game, upgraded what made Crash Bandicoot a good game, and had some new features that would become staples to the series, like collecting crystals to progress through the game. Then Crash Bandicoot World came along and made what was so goddamn great about the second game way better. 
Battle, then Crash had numerous spin-offs, including racing games such as Crash Team Racing, Crash Nitro Kart, and Crash Tag Team Racing, and a party game Crash Bash, and they're all amazing in every way, except for my Nitro Kart. That one was far from perfect. There are other masterpieces, such as Crash Bandicoot The Right of Cortex, which was number 4 in my top 10 other rated games, Crash Transcendent, my favorite game of the series, and the Crash Bandicoot GBA games, which are in my top 5 GBA games. But what about the characters? Every single one of them is likable and have great personalities, with my favorite being the entire Bandicoot family. Crash, the goofy and lovable protagonist of the series, his little sister Coco, who happens to be a computer geek, and my favorite of the bunch, Crunch. <laughs> Rhyme. The villains are also incredibly awesome, such as the main antagonist and Crash's creator, Dr. Neo Cortex, the Master of Time, Entropy, Cortex's former sidekick, Dr. Nitrous Brio, Cortex's current sidekick, Dr. Engine, and many of Cortex's mutant minions, such as Tiny Tiger, Dingo Dial, Ripper Woo, and many others. People say that Crash of the Titans and Crash Mine Over Mutant killed and raped the Wolverine Bandicoot, but I say that what really killed the franchise was the fact that Activision hasn't released or even announced any Crash game after Mind Over Mutant was released. <sighs> I said it before, and I'll say it again. Please leave my childhood for my television screening to the Okay, before I reveal number one, let's take a look at the honorable mentions first. Sly Cooper had unique and fun gameplay. Ratchet and Crank was memorable and had a lot of likable characters. Jack and Daxter was epic in every way. Crash Bandicoot was nostalgia supreme. For number one to be number one, it has to have all of these qualities. And this series not only has all of these qualities, but it makes every single franchise on this list look bland and boring in comparison. And it's none other than the great, amazing, awesome, epic, masterful, brilliant, excellent... Let's get on with it. Fine. Here it is. My number one franchise of all time is... Yep, it's Pokemon. What else did you expect? In almost all of my videos, I've talked about Pokemon to a certain extent. I can't help it, I just love Pokemon that much. So much that I even daydream about living in the Pokemon world whenever I'm bored. It all started when I was 7, and I had a bad appendix, so bad it almost killed me. Doctor said I was really lucky to be alive, and then my parents came, very happy to see me alive and well, and gave me a Game Boy Color with the game Pokemon Yellow, and that's how I fell in love with Pokemon. Anyway, nostalgia aside, Pokemon is an RPG, which is my least favorite video game genre ever. And yet, it's number one on the list. Every single generation of Pokemon has brought nothing but joy and happiness. Cause unlike all the whiny and bitchy gen warners out there, every time a new generation of Pokemon came out, I didn't go like, What is this crap? This isn't Pokemon. This is an abomination how to ruin my childhood. Instead, I was like, More new Pokemon? That is so awesome! Why? Because as a kid, I always believed in a word that is summed up in four words. New is always better. Since Pokemon is an RPG, customization is everywhere. Ranging from giving nicknames to your Pokemon, choosing which attacks your Pokemon have, 
which items should they use or hold, which Pokemon you want on your team, the list goes on and on. This allows for hundreds of different strategies to be created for competitive battling. The name Pokemon was originated from the fact that you can capture many wonderful creatures by using a device called a Pokeball, which stores one of those creatures inside it and can easily fit in your pocket. Hence the name Pocket Monsters, or Pokemon for short. Well that's why they call it that. The Pokemon themselves all have the most creative and original designs I've ever seen. Some more than others. They're usually based on real life animals, plants, inanimate objects, and many other things. The main Pokemon series has always managed to escape the copy-paste curse by implementing numerous new features and innovations in every new generation. For example, Generation 2 introduced the uh, Dark and Steel types to balance the overpowered Psychic type from Generation 1. Generation 3 introduced natures and abilities, giving every single Pokemon their own distinctive personality. Generation 4 introduced the physical special split, which buffed the wilder Pokemon that were pretty underwhelming in previous generations. And Generation 5 introduced rotation and triple battles, with the former being my favorite type of Pokemon battle. Usually when people talk about Pokemon, they mostly discuss the main series, but I feel that the spin-offs are just as good. From Mystery Dungeon to Ranger, the spin-offs are always a blast to play through. With my favorites being Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2 and Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia. My favorite game from the series is Pokemon Black and White 2, which also happens to be my personal favorite video game. With Pokemon Art Gold and Soul Silver, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2, Pokemon Platinum, and Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia are not too far behind. There's also the anime, which I actually grew up with, and I gotta be honest, I still love it despite the absurd amount of fillers and new lack of character development. So overall, Pokemon is the greatest video game franchise IMO, with very addictive gameplay, many innovations to not just the series, but to the video game industry as well, and a huge library of games for both the main series and the spin-off series that makes it just as popular as Super Mario. And I love every single thing about this franchise. I'm the Omni Slayer, and I can't wait for Pokemon X and Y to come out worldwide. <laughs>